Now we're recording this and we'll make it available on YouTube for you as soon as uh, we can here. And I'll send out an email to let you know when that is available. The class will have four parts to it. Today we are covering some basics and that includes uh, setting up employees, crews, patterns, which will be pattern customers, jobs, rounds, pattern packages. Then we will add a customer and talk about adding jobs to the customers. So again, it's just kind of the basics here. Uh, many of you, if not all, have used Clip in the past uh, version, one of our online programs. As you know, Clip's been around for 30 some years and we've sold thousands of programs to landscapers and a few for other industries. Um, over that period of time. And currently, uh, we have a push to have Clip XE, our um, flagship desktop program, uh, move to our online program. So many of you are facing that transition, and I know that can be painful for folks. So yes, we'll try to on. ease the pain for that. Uh, let's see. Need to mute some people. Um. So some of you will be familiar with the way that Clip thinks, even though the screens and the way you navigate in the program are significantly different. Um, by looking at it, some of the processes, I think you'll see similarities, which should make the transition a little easier, we hope. All right, still admitting folks here. That's why I sound a little distracted. Um, the All the information in the Zoom should be the same day after day. Um, I will have this uh, welcome screen up to give you the phone numbers in case you, you misplace those or this will be more convenient for those of you who need audio. Of course, you can use your computer audio. That is, you can use your computer speakers to listen. If you have a mic or on the computer or a headset, then you can use that to um, also talk, although you're probably not going to get much um Many options to talk since so we'll be using the chat for question Q&A um, at the end of the class. Okay. Um, all right. Well, let's be uh, a little more introductory stuff. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Bill Crawford. I've been with CLIP. It'll be 24 years this July. Um, no, I did not help write the program. That is definitely outside of my wheelhouse. I've worn a variety of hats uh, with CLIP and it's kind of settled in on me being the lead trainer for the company. Um, and that involves doing classes like this, one-on-one uh, -on -one interactions using TeamViewer for users, as well uh, occasionally traveling to go to a to a company's office and train in office. I, it was spent about three weeks in the States because, um, oh, by the way, I live in Costa Rica. I spent about three weeks in the States um, in uh, into January, early February, um, doing, meeting uh, different clip, going to different clip users for training. So that's also something that um, may be available to you, but probably a little bit later, um, maybe in, in the summer, but we'll see. Um, as such, I've been to hundreds of uh, hundreds of companies that use Clip in one way or another, which has been very educational for me and I hope beneficial for them. All right, so I started to give the class um, schedule. So over the course of the week, we're going to today cover some basics. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to look at what we call daily routines. That is, um, you know, scheduling work, printing route sheets, doing routing. Uh, recording what's been done. Um, I'm having a glitch with my software to illustrate or to show you the app. I hope to get that ironed out and be able to also demonstrate the app there. If it's not ready tomorrow, I hope before the end of the week, I'll get that to you. Then on Thursday, we cover billing and billing specifically looks at billing out of Clip ITC directly um, or Billing with QuickBooks Desktop. Uh, for a vari variety of reasons, I cannot illustrate um, QuickBooks Online and how Clip integrates with that. So my apologies up front for that. Although, as we will see, m many of the features related to billing are common to all three pro methods of doing billing. Finally, Friday, we will look at reports out of Clip. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and get started. 
Okay, so here is the program. Uh, we're at the dashboard here. The little uh, home screen says dashboard. This is where you go when you first open up the program. Um, I imagine that you are all at different stages of implementation. Some may be very near the beginning. Others may have gotten quite a bit done. Um, I'm not going to assume anything, so um, please forgive me if these are too basic for you and, and you've already um, done these steps and just bear with us uh, while we review. When you first get Clip and open it, there are some basic things you need to do first. And those are enter employees and set up your crews. That's one segment. And the next segment is to create patterns. We'll start with employees. As you can see, there's an employee tab here. You click on it and it lets you log out. Yeah, if I let it sleep a little bit, it goes unconscious, I have to wake it up. All right, so here we go. So under employees, this is a list of our employees here. And adding them are simple. You just click um, new employee and then fill in the basic information you need is a name, uh, first name. And one thing you may get used to, which I still kind of find, find kind of annoying, is that there's a lot of space between some of these fields. And it's not always clear that, oh, you do the first name here, then you go all the way over here for the last name. So different screens, you just have to make sure you're paying attention to locate the fields. Now, within this, you can enter your cost for this employee, the payment type, you know, hourly sal salary. Um, you could create birthdays here and then just fill in this. But the only main things you need are the names. So we'll go ahead and save Mr. Bond here. Okay, so I've now generated a list. Um, unfortunately, you cannot, um, I don't know if it's unfortunate, but you cannot delete employees. You can make them inactive and then you can show them or suppress them. Now, all this is leading somewhere, so please be patient with me for that. Um, we have now our list of employees. Then we go to Customize, and under Customize, you have a crew option here. And here would be a list of your crews. I want to create a crew seven. I click Add here. And now it defaults actually to that crew number. I could change it here if I want to. And this is going to be um, a winter service crew. You can call it whatever you want. You name it, you know, Bob's crew or what have you. So just a little bit more information. Although most of the um, reports are generated based on crew number. I don't think there are any reports based on crew description. Then having uh, created it, I go, okay, so Adam Schiff, he is on that crew. Joe Manchin is on that crew. And Kamala Harris is on that crew. So we're going to have the the, the, those folks, um, out servicing, um, for snow. You are able to assign a crew color if you want to. So this allows you then to, um, on a map, see where this crew is. And again, you can make crews active or inactive and then go ahead and save. All right. Now, when you first open clip, it will include, um, employee one as a sample and a crew one as a sample. You just build from there. So that's um, employees and crews. And one thing we recognize, though, is um, we do recognize that crew changes. And we'll talk about how to manage that through record work. That's actually very easy to manage in the app um, if you use that. And if not, there's still some ways to manage that. But we'll cover that tomorrow when we look at uh, recording work. Now, having set up our employees and crews, we're ready to go into patterns. And you'll see in a moment why the employee crews are important. Patterns have been in Clip since day one. Patterns are another word for templates that you might create where you have certain basic information already filled in. And this saves you time and also helps ensure consistency 
in the uh, data entry process. Um, and the, the patterns we're going to look at are pattern customers, jobs, pattern program, and pattern packages. Pattern customers in Clip ITC really are not quite as essential as they might have been in earlier versions of Clip because we integrate with Google Maps. When you start to type an address in for a new customer, it'll populate the, those fields and fill in then the city, state, and zip code for you. I would say that patterns are probably a little more critical or more important if you charge sales tax because within the pattern, I'll look at here for Germantown, um, you can set up the tax rate. If you don't follow a pattern when you enter a customer, you'll have to remember to assign the tax rate. And if you're like me, you might forget sometimes. Um, so that would be one thing would be to, to make sure the, the tax rate is correct when you're entering that or the tax code there. Um, here is the area for Maryland, uh, where the, our company used to be located. And to create a pattern, you hit add. And then you just fill it out. So here's the pattern name. Um, I don't think I've got a Rockville pattern. I'll add that. So Rockville, you can put a greeting in here. Customer sense, well, it can't be any earlier than today. And then there are no address in there, no source. Those are customer specific. And that's another thing about patterns is that patterns by their very nature are generic. There's a lot of information that will be entered specifically at the customer level, like, again, the date they became a customer, their address, um, a source. How did this become your customer? But some of these you can set up ahead of time, and this includes um, Rockville and then the state. And that they are taxable. Again, these are just basics, and let's say that um, the most common zip code or area code is 240, although area codes, because of cell phones, you never can predict these, but we'll be right some of the time if we do 240 for that. And account notes, statement notes, unless, may, you know, these are, can be mostly customer specific, so you go ahead and hit save. And now you have a, a pattern, hit close, and there it is, Rockville pattern. All right, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, um, not quite as useful as some other patterns, specifically pattern jobs. Pattern jobs now are designed to be a master list of the services you offer as a company. Again, let me repeat that. This is a master list of your services that you provide as a company. When you set up a customer, you copy from this list. So you want the list to be pretty comprehensive. Um, so these are our jobs, lawn maintenance, spring cleanup, bush trimming, etc. So you can see in someone named Jim added something there. Um, but these are then different jobs. Um, and then within the job, you set them up with the basic details. So I'm going to actually, I've got a mowing job, but I'm going to add one just to illustrate. So you click add here and it gives you then a job number, which you can edit. And I'm going to say, this is going to be called weekly mowing. And charge per job, well, that is customer specific. Typically, there might be some others that are not, but if, um, you can leave this blank and wait for the customer level. Category and subcategory come into limited play in the program. If you're not sure about them, you can leave them as is without creating them if you don't want to. Man hour rating, that again is customer specific. How long do you want your crew to spend working on this property, doing this job? Um, charge per hour, you can fill this in because that's usually pretty standard. So we'll say we want to make 60 bucks an hour for mowing. Um, job area, again, that's specific to the customer. Bill type, well, what's the most common ch way you charge for mowing? Do you, are most of your customers installments? Then, then you would 
flag this as including contract, or most of them charge for, charge per job. You flag this again. We're we're not looking for a hundred percent. We're looking for the most common situation when you're setting up the patterns. So we'll say charge per job. Now, just a little sidelight. If you have charge per hour services, maybe a cleanup, you can create a minimum charge for that. Let's say that your minimum charge is an hour and a half. So we can put 90 in here and hit OK. Now, what that means is I, I'm making $60 an hour. I'm charging $60 an hour with a minimum of 1.5 hours. If I do this job for a customer and it takes me an hour to do it, then I would charge them 90 because that's my minimum. If it takes me two hours, then I would charge them 120 because that's over the minimum of the 90. Uh, so this is a nice, nice feature for charge per hour type services. So I'm going to go back though. This is charge per job. Um, add notes. Notes tend to be customer specific as well. Taxable is something you would check here. Um, select crew. So you'd find one of your mowing crews. So uh, we'll just use number one. We'll be right part of the time at least. We may have to change it in some customers, but we'll be right sometimes. Routing sequence, that's uh, specific to the customer. We'll look at that in a bit. Um, status will be active. Sub cost, that uh, will be determined at a customer level most likely. And then if you use QuickBooks, you're going to have an item and a class drop down menu here where you can choose the item that corresponds with in QuickBooks. So we'll go ahead and save this. All right, so now we've got this. Uh, set up and next we go to schedule. Now scheduling, uh, we're going to start mowing here in Maryland. Uh, we're going to start in the um, around the 21st of March and we want this job to always appear on the schedule. This do this job with, this is a countdown and when you start mowing, um, you can set this as a, so uh, let's say, for instance, that you've got a customer that you're um, going to cut them 30 times as part of the installment. And they tell you in no uncertain terms that they do not want and will not pay for any cuts outside of 30. You could put 30 in here and every time this job is done, it will count down. And when it gets to zero, it'll automatically go on hold. Another scenario, again, customer specific, you may have uh, someone who calls you and says, hey, you do such a great job at my neighbors. Uh, you know, I mow my own lawn, but I'm going to be on vacation for three weeks. Can you mow my property while I'm away? You could set it up and put a three in here again at the customer level. You wouldn't change that here in the pattern. Um, make it at least uh, four days between jobs. Um, if you are doing weekly mowings, we recommend doing this. Make at least four. You do have a once a week option here, which is available to you. But we have found in our long experience that this is a little bit nicer for, say, a job that is normally done late in the week, say on a Friday. If you don't get to it till the next week, on Monday, for instance, if this is set to once a week, the program says, oh, it's been done this week when it was done on Monday, so it will not reschedule it for that Friday at the end of the week. It'll reschedule it into the next week. But if you have make it at least three or four days between jobs, it'll say, okay, we did this job Monday. Now I need to count ahead Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and reschedule it. And you would have then just Friday checked down here and it would reschedule on Friday. But in the pattern, you can then go ahead and uh, check the days of the week. Some companies I've talked to, um, I forget. Yeah, I think they don't do Monday mows. They just cut toward the you know, Tuesday through Friday. And if that's your case, you just leave this unchecked. Then we come over here to weeks of the month. So we, we do mowing your uh, month round. And then likewise, check all for this. So, well, except for Maryland, we don't do year round mowing. Unlike the folks in Florida, Georgia, Arizona, et cetera. Uh, so we're going to just um, go ahead and you know, in March, we got to do. So we, we'll just do these nine months. Then come up here and hit save. All right. So now I have kind of the basic schedule set up along with the basic information about the, the job. And in case there's a material. So sometimes we do bagging. So I'm going to just add the material in case they... They bag, so bagging as needed. Now we'll just do this one here. 
and then we'll add material. And this way they're able to um, record if they did bagging and I can charge the customer a little bit extra money for that. Okay, that's how you set up a pattern job. Now, there are many different scheduling schemes and other things to take into account. I'm not going to set up any, uh, really any others. Um, if you've got specific questions about some unusual scheduling situation, you can always email me at billc at clip.com or I will see requests like that that come in through the support chat too. Okay, so we've looked at pattern customers, pattern jobs. Uh, one last thing about pattern jobs, uh, and this is for those of you who've used Clip in the past. So here we have our new job, mowing. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong new job. Oh, I had mowing here, now I got weekly mowing. That's the new job. Let's say I decide that um, I want to change the description of this slightly. So um, maybe I'll say weekly mow trim all. You can come into the pattern change the information in any of the fields here in the schedule, save it, and then if you check the box next to the field or the boxes next to the fields you've changed, you can then come here and click Update All Jobs. The program will then push out the new information to this job in every customer in your system. That can be an easy way to update. Some folks, what they will do is at the end of the season, for instance, or maybe you finish all your spring cleanups, you'll come into the spring cleanup, change the date to you know spring of 2023, check the box, and then update all jobs for the next year. Um, so this is how you could do global replacement. We may come back and see this again if the situation arises, but I wanted to touch on that while we're talking about pattern jobs. Okay, the third pattern we're going to look at, they're called pattern programs. Now, pattern programs are fertilizer, um, IPM type services where you might do uh, several visits over the course of the year, but they're managed a little bit differently than mowing and other services like that. So we're going to look at this. So we have here Turf 5, the Silver Turf Plan, and it is it has six applications as a part of it. Again, some of this information will be um, like area will be customer specific, and we'll look at in a bit, post-service notifications, what that's all about. Call ahead, you can um, flag this. So if you have a requirement where you need to contact people before you go to apply or make application, you're able to select the means by which you want to contact them. And what, so what you would do is you would come in here. So let me, let me go back. I'll just start, I'll do a new one. I'll be creative. So hit add here. And so enter the program. And so this is going to be class and the program name will be um, class five. I'm not going to worry about call ahead. So I save this and now I come to add rounds. So how many rounds do I want to add? I want to add five rounds. I don't want to add them to all the programs, just to this one. So I hit add here. Now here are my rounds. And what you're able to do is you select what round you want. So we come here and we'll see, um, call this pre-emergent. And then you again set up some of the basics. So we do have a, a technician here. I want the job to be active. Um, again, you can put your charge per hour. So I want to do $125 an hour there. Most common bill type is charge per job taxable. Um, you can create a price sheet. I'm not going to go through that exercise where you can, based on the square feet of a property, based on the job area, you're able to determine the price for it. Um, but we'll leave that rest for now. And then I save it. And then I just come to the next round and repeat the same process. I'm going to Make this active. Um, so this is how you set up the pattern programs you use. So I do encourage you, if you do chemical application or again, integrated pest management, this would be a nice way to manage it. And we'll see tomorrow how that plays out day to day as part of the scheduling and routing. 
All right, so we've dealt with pattern customers, pattern jobs, pattern programs. Now we're going to skip over here to pattern packages. Packages, um, this is a new feature of uh, Clip ITC, and, and there's been some struggle by some Clip uh, XE users and making the transition and, and understanding what packages mean. So if you're kind of struggle with this, you're not alone by any means. So let's talk about packages. Packages serve two functions. And under pattern package, one of those functions is enabling you to create a bundle of services that you often sell together. We often sell a maintenance paper service package. And what that means is when I click edit, it has lawn maintenance, spring cleanup, and fall cleanup. Um, these, uh, we almost always try to sell these together. Occasionally we do not. We do have exceptions or we may sell more things, but this is kind of a core um, grouping of services that we want to keep together. And yours can be quite extensive. So if I come back here and we look at the pattern packages again, you'll see here we've got a commercial maintenance package. Well, that has 12 services already associated with it. So here it is. And with commercial, our most common means of payments are installments. And that's the other purpose of packages it allows you then to um, group together jobs based on how those jobs are paid for. And we'll look at that in a little bit more detail when we set up a real customer. But for now, what you would do is again, under patterns and then pattern programs, you create whatever, I'm sorry, pattern packages, you create whatever you need. I would say the, the most basic setup would be that you have um, a paper service package and an installment package. So I'll just show you how to set that up. So you click add, you give it a name other than default package. So installment, oops, why is that not, oh, there we go. I was typing and nothing was happening. Installment package. And the installment package is installment, obviously. And now we've got some information, some fill-ins here. Um, we recommend if you can move toward this, if you haven't already, that all of your contracts automatically renew year to year. That saves you a lot of headaches as far as doing uh, letters to renew contracts. You can just send out a postcard saying, hey, you know, thank you for being our customer in 2022. We look forward to um, serving you in 2023. If you have any questions, uh, please let us know. And, that way, and then come spring or about spring, you can say, hey, we're going to start providing services in the next couple of weeks. Just love to look forward to, you know, we're looking forward to seeing you again, whatever you need to communicate. But that's a lot simpler mailing out a bunch of postcards or doing, sending out a bunch of emails than going through the whole process of creating new contracts for everybody. So anyway, we'll say contract never expires. It does need a start date. So we'll go ahead and start it for February 1st. Again, if you charge sales tax, you put check that off as default. Now, again, the and the monthly installments will be unique to each customer. So I'm going to save this. You don't have to add jobs to any of these packages to uh, create a pattern. You can go ahead and just, okay. It's not saving this. So let me see if it doesn't like that date. Because in a real customer, it doesn't let you. Hmm. Huh. Okay. That's fun. All right. Let me just hit undo. See if that does anything. Okay. Let me try that again. I apologize. I don't know why this is uh, being recalcitrant. Usually it, it lets you know there's like it gives you a field in red as to what is incorrect and missing. So charge by job installment. Yes. Yes, yes, here, okay, and then number of jobs in package, save. Well, let me go and see if it saved it. It did not. All right, well, well that's one for support and development. I will see what's up with that. 
Um, okay, but you can create, so here's, for instance, an example of a residential paper service. So again, no jobs in here for that. All right, so packages, two purposes. One is to allow you to bundle together services that you offer. And then when you add the package to the customer, all those services will come along. Likewise, set them up by how they are paid for. Okay, having covered employees and setting up crews and creating patterns, we're going to now go to adding a new customer. That's done under customers, naturally. And in the find customer section here, um, well, before I add someone by clicking new customer, let's talk about looking for customers. The program has a very generous search function. And one thing about that I recommend is that you come into this little icon here and at least add property name and address as search values. That way, if you aren't sure of the name, but you know that it's at 123 Main Street, you could enter in 123 Main and you'd find a result there. Um, and so you can search by first name, last name, street name, a lot of different filters you can use to search to make it easy to find. Now, with the old clip, um, we used customer numbers quite a bit, and that was one way you could search. Now, unfortunately, with Clip ITC, if the customer is numbered 56, and you did a search for number 56, you're going to pull up any phone number with five, six adjacent to each other in the phone number or address or zip code or something. But it should at least narrow the results. So for instance, if I want Bob Hope, I can type Bob. And now here are the Bobs. I can go to Bob Hope there. Okay, so let's, um, let's go ahead and add new customers. So I'm going to click new customer. And when you hit new customer, it brings up your list of patterns. Now, I am going to show you um, how to add without a pattern. So I'll hit close here. And here we are in the customer. Now, I have residential accounts starting at number 200. So I'm going to change the um, account number there to 200. Now, notice it's telling me 200 is already in use. So it was changed to 227. That's fine. That just shows me again it's within the range for um, residential accounts. And this res this guy is his name is Rip Torn, and the address is I uh, come down here and so customer since today, and I come down. That's now this is where you have to remember to add sales tax, and it's going to be one eight three. Now notice what's happening here. It is beginning to look for addresses. So it's going to be Greenway Drive. And there it is, Frederick, Maryland. And then I just click there, Frederick's filled in, Maryland's filled in, and so is Zip. And I'm going to save this. All right, now we're going to play a little game called Trick the Program. I've talked to folks over the last few weeks who've talked about the need to have the county somewhere in the system for reports and such. Well, for some reason, in their wisdom, our um, developers have a country field or list here, Canada, USA. And, you know, I don't know how many people would provide services across a border. Uh, maybe folks up in Bellingham or something might, but um, you can redirect this. So you could use the country field to, to set up the county. So um, let's, I want to add a new, so this, this is actually Frederick County. So I'm going to go FR for Frederick and do Frederick County and it's not Howard County or um, it's Frederick so, or Montgomery County. So then I go close and I come here and now I can choose Frederick. And that way I've got this available for reports and other purposes. So then I go ahead and save this. All right, looking more at this screen. So again, we're inside his specific account, and this is how you navigate inside of customers. Over here are emails. So I'm going to give him, actually give him my email, billc at clip.com. 
And then you can give a name here for the, like if it's uh, Mrs. Torn or someone else. Um, and you're also able to check off what this customer will be emailed. Um, excuse me a second. My cat is here. I need to put him out the door. So please excuse me for just a second while I let the cat out. One of those joys of uh, working from home, and I know many of you in this age of a uh, time of COVID probably had to work at home and deal with uh, domestic type things that come up. Okay. Um, to add a new customer and clip, I click enter and the new number would come up. Can you still do that? Um, when you click, you know, add a new customer, it searches for the first available number, which is different than how our programs did it in the past. In other words, if you've got gaps in your numbering system, it'll find the lowest number, for the first gap in that. In the old clip, it would um, find the highest or the next highest available number. So if in the old clip, if you had a customer with the number 2015 and that was your highest number in use, when you went to add a new customer, it would default to 2016. So a little bit different approach. And that's why the ability to edit the customer number allows you to be more selective. And, and to say a little bit more about that, many reports in Clip can be generated based on customer number range. That means that if it's, if it's important for you, for instance, to get a report about all your commercial accounts, then you might want to have your commercial accounts be within a certain number range. What we would commonly recommend is that, you know, one to a hundred or one to 500 would be residential and 501 to a thousand would be commercial accounts. And again, that way you could get reports, you know, either for just residential, just commercial or for both. Um, but the program will allow you to edit the number. And if it's already in use, it will notify you and give you another number as an, as an alternative for that. Over here with email, so let's look at these a little bit more. Email invoices. This means that this customer would like to have um, their bill emailed to them. When you were in the invoicing system, which we'll look at on Thursday, you'll see you'll have the option to also print, um, but at this stage, you're just setting them up to be emailed. Um, email pre-service, post-service. The program allows you to create a pre-service email. What this means, you can uh, send an email out to your customers uh, the day before, week before, two weeks before, or the day of a service. That means that today when I came into the office and pulled up my email, I had a pre-service notification that I was going to be, that my lawn was going to be mowed tomorrow. So it gives you just a chance to, to give your customers a heads up about services. Post service are sent out after the work is finalized. So the work shows up on the schedule. It's done. You record it. You finalize it. And then after that, it will then, I think at three in the morning or I'm not sure the exact time, it will send out an email to everyone who is flagged as a post service um email saying that a, that a service was done. So let me see if I can uh, show you a sample of those um, from what I got today. So hang on a second. Okay. All right, here is an example of a um, pre-service email. So just letting you know that we're coming out to your property to the following service. Now I don't have, there's a, what's called a tag you put in here that we give the name of the service. Thank you for being our customer. Unless there's anything else that we can do for you. Oh, so here's the service name, lawn maintenance, front yard, service date, and the property address. So this is what the service notification looks like. I don't know if I've got a post service. Let me see if I do. Um, no, it doesn't look like it. All right, but this is a pre-service notification. And those are set up 
under marketing emails here. Again, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this particular one. We might look at a little more detail on some of the emails that you can send, but, but not that one. And if you've got more than one email associated with an account, you can do the here. You can also do more contacts here. So these are additional people you can set up and, you know, title, president for, you know, name, email, address, etc. So you do have um, a, lots of ways to communicate with your customers. Display name is duplicate. Well, that's okay. Um, oh, yes. Well, display name. The display name actually does need to be unique. So I'm going to add a little asterisk there because it thinks it's a duplicate for that. So it makes it, well, okay. Okay. Let me get out of here and come back in. Okay, there he is. Oh, by the way, when you're in this screen here, so you've looked for someone and you've selected them, you can actually click on a job. So we haven't finished setting up his jobs yet, but when they are, you'd be able to click on the job here and it would take you directly to that job within the account. You could click up here in the history section and it would take you directly to that customer's history. Otherwise, most commonly, you'd either double click on the name here or once you have see the account, you can hit view more to open it up. The next thing you do then is having set up the information uh, about the customer, you would go into properties and the properties, this is where you would um, see the packages. Likewise, a couple other functions here. The other screen under general would be the billing address. This is the physical address of where the work is done. That means that if they're different, you can edit the address here. Likewise, a customer may have more than, than one location where you provide services. So in this case, let's say that he has a rental property down the street. So I'm going to hit add here. And I will then say it copies all this. So I'm going to hit rental. And so now rental property and it's going to be at one. Um, 89 Greenway Drive. So now I've got this and I hit save. Oops, down here, package. Um, so I'll just call this default for now. And then save this. See, that's an example of the program telling you what information is needed to in order to save. Now we have two different locations for Mr. Torn here. Um, so then under each property, we then come down here to what packages the property has. The program provides a default package when you add a new customer and you can just go in and use this package. So I don't have to add a new one, but if let's say he's my maintenance account, I can hit add here. So I've got this and it's going to be the maintenance uh, paper service. So I check this off, click add and close. So now back here is the maintenance paper service package. And then you've got the lawn maintenance here. And um, then what I can do then is I can come to the default package and just delete it. Okay, I'm getting the question as to how do you how do you import customers from QuickBooks to Clip ITC? Um, that happens the first time you synchronize between the two programs. Um, and that's a little bit more involved. Let me see if I can maybe delay that. I can try to take a look at that at the end of this class. So let me uh, carry on with this. But um, Lee, that's now, Lee, I know you're already a Clip user. So we'll pull in all your existing Clip customers from ClipXE with their current connection with QuickBooks. Additional customers are added as you synchronize between the two programs. If a new customer is added in QuickBooks, it'll then be brought over to Clip. 
if you add a new customer and clip, it'll be pushed over into, into QuickBooks. Um, I'll try to get into that process in a little more detail in a bit. Okay, so now we have this. Um, in here is a charge for job, and this is just actually just an active. It's not a project thing, so I'll tweak that. And then we're going to come to his rental property. And in the rental property, we're just going to do um, mowing. So we're going to come here. And again, I can use the default package and we'll add mowing in a, in a moment. Okay. We've added the prop. We've added the customer. We've edited properties and looked at packages. So then we go to add jobs. Now, the first time you click on jobs here, it's going to actually throw you onto the list of pattern jobs, but I'm going to close that for a second. Um, so here would be our list of pattern jobs. I'm going to close this because I don't want to go there so fast. Okay, right now I'm in the Rip Torn rental property, the default package, and there are no jobs. So I'll click add here. And now it comes to that list of pattern jobs. And I want to add our new mowing job. We're going to use this one. So 46. So I click on that and I hit add and close. Okay, so now it has added it uh, with the default crew here, our default schedule here. I'm not going to use day of the week. Um, and this is going to be a Tuesday job. So I choose Tuesday here. I go up here and I make sure this date lines up with Tuesday. Everything else in the scheduling looks good. Uh, the cost of this is going to be $55. Um, it's actually going to be done by crew two. And so you've got ways just to tweak the information. And I'm also going to figure out how long my crew has. So I'm going to hit calc two and we're collecting $55. I want to make 60. And so this tells me I've got 0.92 or 55 minutes for that. Um, how many properties can you add? Mark, I don't think there's a limit to that, actually. How many properties can be added? Um, how do you set up pattern job changes and add them to services since job changes next you don't transfer to ITC? Um, Tom, let's come back to that one at the end of this because that's a little more involved for that. Um, all right, so we've added the mowing service. We've set the day of the week. And now I can come down here to add notes. And so here are the notes that you want. So I'm going to say watch out for the dog. And I have some um, uh, folks who are Hispanic, and I want to translate this into Spanish. So there we have the translation. If you have uh, up on Long Island in New England, you have a lot of Portuguese workers. I think you can choose Portuguese as the target language if you want. So, yep, here are some other options. So English, Spanish, French, Portuguese, Italian, or German. There. Um, so these notes appear in the app and on the paper route sheets. So what this enables you to do is to, to translate the notes and they will show up every time this job is on the schedule. Limited route sheet notes are notes that show up uh, for a limited number of occurrences. For instance, you get a call from a customer that they're having a St. Patrick's Day party in March and they want some special, they want the outdoor water feature to be green, um, the water in there, what have you. So you can put notes about what is needed and then you could come here and say, okay, I want these notes to appear. I don't forget when you say the 14th to the 22nd or the 21st and once. So now the new notes here will show up in addition to these notes during this time period and one time, and then they'll disappear. You don't have to remember to go in and, and change them there. Um, and then down here are invoice notes. Invoice notes are notes that will transfer over for the 
customer to see on the invoice. This can be a, fur, a fuller explanation as to what this service includes. You can also create invoice notes on the fly when you're recording work, and we'll see that tomorrow. Um, internal notes are just notes for you in-house. What this means is if you're tracking, say, price increases or other information that are for your eyes only, you can do that here. The crew or the customer will not see those notes. You're also, with the app, able to add other types of files. You can add a photo, a little video, an audio file to help them clearly understand what needs to be done on that job. Um, so that gives you more ways to communicate with the crew besides just the notes. And when you've got things the way you want them, you hit save and close, and there's a little time lag here, but this should disappear. There it goes. Okay, um, so we've set up the job, and we've set up the notes for it, the price, the budget of time, uh, job material that will come into play as needed. Um, all right, so next we go to um, Rip Torn, the main account here, get under properties. And here we have then the three services that were part of this package. And then we just go through and do the same process here. So for his house, it's $125. We come into Calc 2, and it's 60. So a little over two hours to do this property. And by the way, the man hour rating is based on one man. So, uh, that means that if we're taking in $125, and we want to make $60 an hour, one man would do this in just over two hours. The program takes into account based on those setups we did. Remember, we went under customized teams or uh, crews, and we set up how many employees were on a given crew, in this case, uh, crew one. Um, then when it appears on the route sheet, it can break down how much actual clock time a three-man crew has for this. It would be just a little over uh, 40 minutes, 41, 42 minutes. If it's in the app, the app will also translates. So when the crew uh, opens the app and they show who's on it that day, Tom, Dick, and Harry, or if Harry's gone, they can pull him off and Jose's there instead, Tom, Dick, and Jose. It would then, again, show them that based on a man hour rating of two hours, they've got 40 minutes to do that. So that way your crew is, is aware of how much time they have actually based on the number of bodies on that crew. And so the same process. So this is done, um, you know, again, we're, you know, you know, I should be smarter setting up these scenarios, but this will also will be on a Tuesday because it is right next door. So I'm going to actually give this to crew two also like the rental property and so on. So that's how you set up um, jobs within customers here. Um, all right, so we've been covering the basic setup. So just to kind of recap, what we will do, what you do is you set up employees, then under customize, you create your crews with which employees are typically on that crew. Having done that, you're able then to set up pattern customers, pattern jobs, pattern programs, and also pattern packages. Then comes the real work of going into each customer, adding or creating the package within that account, and then within that package and also creating properties, you would then add the services that the customer gets and fill out the detail, price, crew assignment, et cetera, start date, day of the week. Um, and that's the most time-intensive, busy part of setting up the program. Um, why don't you have to set up crew number under days? Oh, excellent question, John. Okay, notice down here you've got crews and you've got routing sequence numbers. This this capability or these columns or fields were added specifically for pavement maintenance companies because a pavement maintenance company, they may go to Walmart every every day, you know, three in the morning or something. They're sweeping the Walmart parking lot or Target or some other large big box store. But that doesn't mean there's the same truck every night. And this allowed pavement maintenance to then assign different trucks and also different routes because on one 
you know, one night they might have 10 stops, another night they might have five, and the order might be a little different given on what, given what they're doing that night. So the routing sequence number can vary. But this allows the, the user to set uh, a different truck for different nights, different days of the week. You really not an illustration that's necessary for landscaping. So you can pretty well ignore the crew and the routing sequence number for that. Um, all right. So having done some of the basic setup, let me do a quick overview of the um, links in the customer's account. I'll go to a, more of a real customer for this. So I'm going to come down to uh, Bo Brummel here. All right, so we've looked at properties, jobs, adjust packages. If you have a custom, oh, you know, let me pause. I apologize. I did not cover something. So let me come up here and cover it here under bow. When you are in the packages, you this is how you set up an installment. So we call this contractor. Again, you can name it what you want. Your customer will not see this description here. So I'm going to say this is a... So when you're in the installment, you can check off if it never expires. If it does, you can give it a start date and an end date. And now here's where you put the installments. Now, one thing you're, they did not too long ago was, let's say this is actually two twelve fifty after a price increase. I hit fill all months and it'll fill that out with the installment. And then when you go to jobs here, and you go to installment package, you would add the services that are included in that, in that contract. And they would have the bill type include in contract for that. Um, so that's how you set up an installment and you can have multiple installment accounts for a customer. That means those of you in colder climates could have one installment, which would be uh, cover the, the landscaping services. Then you could do a second installment where the snowplow services are, are included. Um, and you, again, you set up as many packages as you want for that. Now, adjust package, what this allows you to do is here we've got this installment. Well, let's say that next season, um, they move a job from one other package to this. You can just come over, grab the job and drag it over. And then update bill type means it wants me to make this including contract. So I will do that. So that's how the um, adjust package works. It just allows you to, to pull information from one package to another. Um, estimates. This is a new feature in Clip ITC. And what it allows you to do is create an estimate name, a date, and then you can add services. So you would come here. This is your list of, of jobs. Um, so I'm going to add lawn maintenance just to show you how this works and then hit add selected services to estimate. And there it is. And then for each job, when you hit edit, you're able to um, put in the charge for that particular job. So it'll be $60. Man hours, uh, one. Uh, travel time, taxable, etc. So we go ahead and save this. And now you can come up here. We're going to come back. We're going to do um, proposed. Save this. Now you're able to um, send this to the customer via email, or you can print it. And you've got some options here. So hide material, hide individual charges. I'm going to. Uh, the template here has to do with emailing. You, you can create a standard email or different variations of the email to choose from. Um, so when you hit print here, um, and then here would be the lawn maintenance, materials, bagging, early spring, materials, late spring, etc. And then this would be the total. Um, we need to clean this up. It's not really the prettiest. Um, estimate you could ask for. Um, but one thing it has going for it is if you email it, then the estimate in the email will have the option for the customer to accept and sign. And then you'd be notified that he's accepted the estimate. 
And the jobs on the estimate would be added to his account automatically. So to save you some setup time. Um, okay, let me just, um, all right, let me just see, got behind on some of the questions here. Um, there's no currently no way to create an estimate based from a job package, but let me make a note of that um, because that's actually a good idea. That you could just choose the package and then it would come over. So thank you for that idea. Um, then you cannot edit the name of the service on here. There are some limitations to this. I mean, you do have the ability to put the um, put notes here for this. One request that's coming, I'm not sure what the status is, is actually for each job have um, notes associated with that that you might want in the estimate, perhaps a fuller description of what that service is, particularly for a, a potential customer that can be valuable marketing. Um, so we'll, I'll follow up with development about that, uh, the ability to have notes, you know, Lawn maintenance includes, you know, cutting, trimming, and mow, you know, cutting, trimming, and blowing, and with the latest and greatest uh, lawn care equipment, you know, whatever you want to say there for that. So this is an area that definitely um, is, I think, can 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 stand some attention by us, and will just improve as the as the days go on. Um, and you can't the, really the estimate notes here will not transfer anywhere so they won't transfer to the route sheet notes or anywhere else Lee um, they have to be copy paste for that um, is there a way to hide the total let me look and see um, hide unit cost and individual charges not yet so I will let me make a note of that too okay um, all right, so I've, we got a couple of votes for hiding the total. I'll move that over to development for that. Um, all right, next. So we're, again, we're still in the customer to dos. Um, to dos are this is like a, a kind of basic CRM type application where you're able to keep records of interactions with customers and also future activities. So here's Bo Brummel. So Bo gives you a call and he says, hey, he's uh, getting his tax refund back in um, April, May, and he wants you to come out and build an outdoor kitchen for him. Well, you're talking to him and it's February, there's still snow on the ground. So you come in here, you hit add task. And then you say, this is going to be for an, an estimate for outdoor kitchen. And you give it a date when you want it to pop up. So let's say you want to be reminded of this on March 14th. And then you can assign it to your people within your organization. So here I'm assigning it to myself. And then um, I can do more notes here. I hit save. And once I hit save, I'm able to email it to myself or to whoever I assign it to for them to get a heads up about it. Otherwise, what's going to happen is on uh, the 14th of March, when I come into the office and log in to Clip, I'm going to see on the home screen here this orange bar. So I have multiple to-dos, do or overdue. Now, the one that I just says set up won't be here because it's not March 14th yet, but here are other samples. So um, some of these is like Glenn estimate accepted. So if you email a customer an estimate and they accept it, this is how you'll be notified of this. And I hope you would stay on top of this more than I have been able to. Um, so it doesn't get quite as cluttered as this. But this is a way then to communicate to you um, activities for your attention. Okay. Um, all right. So back here. So that's the to-dos. Oh, one other thing. If you use the app and the crew in the field creates a general note that is they're on a property they see something that needs to be attended to they can enter a note there and the note will actually create a to-do or an action item for you so it's not just a note communicated to the office but it does create a follow-up so it doesn't slip through the cracks as easily um, history is history it comes at the top, a list view, and then whatever one you select here, so come round two, 
down here would be the detail of whatever line you've accepted. So here is where you could do some editing potentially here. Um, you've got the material that was used, um, the employees who were on the job that day, the notes. So these are the notes the employee saw at that time. This way, if you get a call from a customer and they say, hey, you know, we really need you guys to start weed whacking behind the air conditioning unit. You go ahead and you pass it on to the to the crew, at least you think you do. And then you, a couple of weeks later, the customer calls and says, hey, I asked you to weed whack and no one's been doing it. You can then come in here for those visits and see, well, was it in the route sheet notes? Did you update those to include the weed whacking behind the air conditioning unit? And it might be you forgot and it's on you or it might be that you did, but the crew does, didn't read it. So in other words, it gives you kind of some helpful information as to what was happening that day from the crew's perspective. Uh, this is where weather conditions would be tracked. The crew through the app can take pictures of a job. And so here's where those pictures would be. Also, it will geo stamp if you use the app and this will show them within where they actually were when they clocked in and out of this job. Um, that way, if a customer calls you up and says they never were there on a given day, you could come in and actually find their GPS coordinates for that time. Um, documents. Documents are where you can drag and drop files from your computer or upload files from your computer uh, related to this customer. And what's nice about the online program, you're able then to um, see these wherever you go. If you happen to be working from home or if you're on the road and, and you can pull it up in your laptop or tablet to see documents, you don't have to be in the office where the computer or file cabinet is located with that document. Um, invoices. Whether you connect with QuickBooks or not, Clip ITC is going to create an invoice within Clip for you. Um, so this would be a list of the different invoices. Um, you can delete an invoice, make a correction of errors, and run it again. So that gives you a little more flexibility than you've had in the past. Uh, you can reprint the invoice from here. So if a customer calls you and says, hey, uh, this um, invoice from December, they don't have, you can hit view invoice. And here it is. And you just go ahead and print that out and then give it to the customer. Um, finally, you have custom fields. Under customize, so let me show you kind of the start of this. So if you go to customize here, then you come down to custom fields under change list, or you can access it here. You can create then um, custom fields. If you use XE and have been using custom fields, unfortunately, those will not convert into Clip ITC, but you can at least recreate them uh, within. So I've got account manager and turf type, and I come back here. And so here's the account manager, Dudley Do Right, and turf type is going to be mix here. And these will flow into reports, um, custom reports for that. All right. Can you print history for a customer for end of year tax purposes? Um, yes. So history reports are printed under the reports section, customer reports, history. And you can choose a specific um, customer here, date range, what you want to show, and then hit show report. You can print it or save it as a PDF to email to someone. Um, yeah, we've Brookview. Um, in Clip XE, you did have the ability to, from within a job in a customer, to print a history report for that specific job. Currently, that's not available in ITC. That has been a pretty popular request recently, so development has that on their to-do list for that. Um, can you print a physical invoice to give to the customer at the time of service instead of sending an invoice after the fact? Um, Kyle, um, Yes, with a little asterisk, and we'll look at that tomorrow. Um, okay, we had a, a request about another pattern, um, pattern and the, what we call job changes. Okay, let's, let's talk about this. This is specifically designed for folks who do snow removal. One of the ways snow removal contracts can be structured is that you charge a different amount based on the number of inches for that. And so here I've got this change list. So these are the number of inches here. 
And so this is where you would set it up. You come in here and you would then um, create the list of, of your different number of inches here. Um, now, again, this is the pattern. So the actual pricing or job charge and man hours would not be here. It would be in the customer level. And then you select the job that this is a part of. So uh, snow removal is the job. And um, so this is where you're adding a, a – so this is where you would put the name of the – so let's see. I'm doing um, snow removal nine inches plus there. And again, charges are not there. So I go ahead and hit process. And now I've got – the uh, nine inches plus here under the change, na the name change. Okay, so it snows. And we're going to do this. This is a little bit jumping ahead. So we go to daily. I go to activate zone jobs because snow is a zone job. And I want to do crew uh, six, you know, jobs or that plow truck, hit activate. And then I come in here and we'll go to today. So I'm a little jumping ahead a little bit till tomorrow. So get work. Okay, so now I come down here. And here's my snow removal. Now, one way to do snow removal is just to create different jobs reflecting different lists. So we've got Adam Taylor here. All right, so I'm going to record Adam Taylor real quick. Record work. And we're going to come in here to property name. Oh, I've got to change this to some. Okay, so Adam Taylor, snow removal. So I click here. My market is done. Normally, I didn't start and stop times, but I'm just trying to speed through this a little bit. So then I go in and I finalize it, and it creates a batch here. So here's the batch. So I go to the batch, and I say, okay, this was actually three to six inches. So I come here, and I hit apply changes. Now, this is a set of quite right because I should have it set up more in his account but it would then apply those changes now uh, just to look at his account here customers Adam Taylor snow removal so here's job change so within his account I would have um, Snow removal six to nine. Here's the description. Here's the job charge. Man hours. Now I would have the other ones in here if I'd done my homework. I would have had this set up correctly. But basically, those are the moving parts to do it. You so you go under patterns and you set up then the job changes that you have. And then you select the job they're associated with. I had two snow removal jobs on here. That's why that didn't take with the, that one for Adam. I had this other one there. And then having set these up, when you actually do the work, you can select how many inches were actually pushed and apply that to all the jobs that were recorded that day. And it will take the respective amounts from the customer for that. Okay, um, when marking work is done, is there a way to preview list of work done? Um, kind of. So again, this is getting us into tomorrow, but one of the reports, um, the equivalent of the final list of work done that you had in other versions of CLIP is the daily work report here. And if you come here and click include unfinalized work, this would give you then a preliminary um, of what was done that day without it having been posted yet. So that's the, really the closest you'll come to it at this point for Clip ITC. Um, 
All right. Well, let's start um, getting kind of wrapped up here. So any more questions? Um, again, focusing on what we're covering today, the setups and adding customers and jobs. You know, one. Th uh, let me, because one thing, it just reminds me. Actually, I got an email from a user earlier that said it was taking them a very long time to set up customers. And one shortcut you might have, want to take is that, so we'll come to Adam Taylor, and we hit view more here. When you're in a customer's account, there's this create copy. What this will do is it will take a copy of all this front page information here, as well as the jobs for the customer. So if you're adding, let's say again, you're talking to the neighbor of one of your existing accounts, well, he's on the same street. Um, he may want the same services. You can go into your customer, hit create copy, and then from there, fill it in with the, the new um, account's name and, and tweak the address, have the jobs in there with the right day of the week as the neighbor. So it'll help shortcut um, adding a customer by hitting create copy. Um, okay, and actually we can change this job snow inches in the record work. Is it possible to do it that way still? Um, not in record work, but one thing, and this will be, this is kind of getting ahead. When you're in the invoicing here and you go to print edit individual invoices. So let's, um, so here's Adam Taylor. So I'm in here. What I can do is I can click the pencil. I can come here and do, one to three inches and a hundred dollars in save. So that can be done in this screen, not in the record work screen to edit the, well, that's not quite accurate. Okay, in the record work screen, you could do it. It's just a little more steps because if you're in daily record work, okay, so see this job is done, George Flintstone fall cleanup. If I hit the little expansion here, I could come in here. No, I can't. I could have sworn it let me edit the description here. Okay, sorry. Forget that. You can edit it, edit, edit it in the um, invoice section. Um, why was the option residential commercial removed? Actually, it wasn't removed. And also a question about square footage. So I go to the same place for this. Um, if you want to flag a, an account as commercial or residential, it's actually done under properties. So here under properties, you've got the property type over here. And also we have a question about inter square footage. You can do that in a couple different places. Here within properties for Acme, I go to more property information and there is a job area here that you can do. You can also do the square footage in individual services. So here now is the um, job area here. So those are a couple places you can put the um, square footage or the property area there. All right, any other questions? Okay, if you have the square footage, um, well, if you have the square footage in the property tab, does it change? No, this, this uh, the field here and the field under property are not connected with that. Um, I only have three sub menus under the pattern jobs. Very good question, um, Joe. What often what'll happen is, We'll push out a new, some new features and you'd see them here under new. So I'll click on new. And so here is what they just added on the 10th and then come down. This is January 20th and December and so on. Often what you'll have to do then is go into users and you'll have to 
turn them on because we don't um, default those as being available to all users. You have to go in and edit. So if you come into edit users, notice how this is solid. That means there are some features under this topic that I do not have permissions to do. Now, in this case, it's natural because I'm not connected with QuickBooks, so that makes sense. But just to show you that, let's say under daily crew position. So if I come into this screen and I see this solid box, it means, oh, okay, there's something new if you're the admin or one of the, you know, you, you do everything in the program. There's something new that I don't have permission for. Now you can hit the, you know, the plus and go in and, and, it, you know, pursue it, see what specifically it is, or you can just click on this. So in your case, um, Joe, what has happened is under patterns, you probably don't have these other options checked off yet. So I suggest going in and just seeing if that's the case. So again, if you come into your the, a user, and we'll go into a different user. So we'll go into um, student three. See, they've got lots of things not available to them. Anything with this solid box there. Um, if you do that invoice editing, but not send the invoice till later, will the editing stick around since you saved it? Yes. So if you change something in the edits in the invoice screen and save it, even if you do billing, you know, then at the end of the month, a few days or a couple weeks down the line, it'll still save that. Um, all right. Is there still a job defaults where you can apply the same data across multiple jobs for a customer? Um, the only place, and actually this is actually on topic, the only way you can do that is for um, application type services. So if I come in here, let me see, is that under the contract? No, well, let me just go into jobs for this account. When you add a, um, an installment, or I'm sorry, when you add a, um, a program to a customer, um, let's see. Okay. All right. So I've got the silver turf plan here. Now, all of these applications have something in common for square footage, for instance. If I click here on the name of the, the plan, the program, I can then hit edit program and come in here and I could put in the area. I could put in the, the, the charge per job, man hour rating, etc. And for down here, if I check the little boxes opposite those fields, when I hit save, all this information is going to then populate for each round individually. Now, you may have one round that's at a different price because of the more expensive material or product you use. You can go in and edit that, but it saves you from clicking in five or six or seven times to set up who the tech is or what the square feet is, etc. But we don't have that same default, unfortunately, that we had in, um, in XE. All right. Um, is there a way to create an estimate off of a program. One other way to do estimates or proposals um, is under custom reports. And we'll look at this more on, on Friday. But you can actually create, if you've got your document with the, you know, the standard verbiage and the you know, such, you can create an Excel sheet and merge it into that. And you can do it for a specific customer or, or you can do it this to create a mass mailing. And we'll look more about that on Friday. If we're not using programs, packages, and clip XE, you know if there's a way to use it and have all customers have them when our conversion is done. Packages were not a thing in XE. Um, well, not, let me see if I've got my XE open. Hold on a second. Let me show what we did allow you to do in XE. So. In XE, what you could do was you're able under pattern jobs to set up job packages. So here I've got a mow and trim package and it had these services in it. 
And so again, we call it base, basic maintenance for this, for instance. So you could set these up. These do not communicate to ITC, nor do the, um, yeah, the only thing that comes over from XE and that's kind of similar is your programs will come over. Um, so packages won't, programs will, but then you have to put them in a package for a customer. Still a way to adjust routing like the update route list. Uh, we'll look at that tomorrow. Um, okay. Uh, it's 224. I want to thank you for your patience. Uh, my email is billc at clip.com. If you have any questions that come to you after uh, class or between now and the next class, feel free to email me. If you have suggestions on how we can improve the class, that'll be great. So what I'm going to do is we're going to end the class now and end the recording, and we'll see if we have one of our handy-dandy tech guys can help get that up on YouTube in the next few days, and I'll let you know when that happens. Otherwise, I will see you um, tomorrow. So I hope you have a great afternoon and enjoyed being with you all today. Bye-bye.